Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. Um, I am going to do some um, shorter videos just creating different types of ephemera and embellishments and stuff like that. So this is the first one that I want to create. Um, I did this probably last year, um, and I thought it'd be something cool. So now this one I made with cardstock, and I did not back it. Um, this one is four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Now, depending the size of your strips, you can make them smaller and bigger. If you're doing scrapbooking, you'll want it bigger, probably more like this size, which is a six by six. Um, but you can make it as small or as big as you want, um, depending on the width of the strips and how many strips. This is a three strip by three strip. This one's four strips by four strips. And then you can even do, like if the strips, these strips are, so this square is an inch by, an inch and a half by an inch and a half. These squares, I believe, yeah, same thing, inch and a half by inch and a half. But they're four strips by four strips. This one's three strips by three strips. Um, so that's the final product. Depending on sizing, of course, it could be different. This one I just put together. I have not glued it yet. Um, but remember, because the back is white, if you use, instead of cardstock, you use paper, you could put a backing on it, um, say, coffee dyed paper or even a pattern paper. If this one wasn't so busy... I could use pattern paper, but I would take a color from here if I'm going to do a color, yellow or blue or this um, brownish color, um, golden, whatever. Um, I would put that kind of paper on the back. If you like the antique look, then probably coffee dyed paper, even if you don't. Um, or you can just leave it as is, too. But you have to consider the size of your journal. Um, so these are the six by six papers. Now these I cut even smaller. See, this is a one inch. See there, one inch, one and a half inch. So this is a one inch strip. See, one inch. So if I do a one inch strip and I only do the three by three, because it's one inch, that would make it three by three. Now, honestly, if you think of it, you could do three by four. You just would have to then cut off on this side. So you'd have three, uh, let's say, if you're doing it with one inch strips, just ease your calculation. You would then have a three inch by a four inch. So you would cut it at four inch cut it at three inch, then weave it. Cut your pieces first because with this one, if you see, it, no matter how much I squish it together, there will always be some kind of overhang. So you squish it together as much as you can. Oh, no, not that one, that one and that one. Right, because you, you're doing it with the strips that run this way, you're pushing it that way. And then when you turn it, the strips that run this way, not the ones that run that way, but the one that runs this way, you're going to push in on it. So, um, you w it will not be perfect. Because of the overlap, it takes up some of the paper. It's very minor. But it does add up by the time you get to the edge. 
So you will have, to, once you glue it down and you make sure everything is in position the way you like it, you glue down the top flaps, these flaps. This one, these two, these two. Then you'll flip it over and then you'll do like this flap, this flap. Because these are the flaps that are on this side. And then see that one's not there, it's these two. But when you flip it over, it's these two. So all the outer flaps you glue down. You don't glue the middle. You just glue the outside. But technically, if you think of it, if you don't glue the middle, you could technically tuck something in there. You know, like, like um, I don't know, a, some, a wording. Like here I have, she has fire in her soul. So technically I could put part of it tucked under on the two sides or you could just have like a peekaboo you know do something with a frame there's so many options you just let your mind wander but so I wanted to show you these are one inch strips because I'm actually going to make three three by threes with this one and this one I'm going to leave it like that and glue it down so let's cut this one now my this cutter that i have um it does centimeters i did not notice that when i bought it this is centimeters there's no inches on it i have to mark one inch two inch but of course when you mark it it's not 100 percent accurate i know it's two and a half centimeters to equal one inch i believe it's two and a half so that means two and a half is right here, which is where I mark the one inch. And then two with that half makes it, so five centimeters is two inches. So I marked it that way, but I am eventually going to replace this one with one that has inches and centimeters because I work still in inches, even though I live in Canada and we are on the metric system when i graduated high school it we only had the metric system for about a year so i'm used to the inches um the imperial imperial uh system so i need one that at least has the one inch now if it has centimeters like one inch and then on this side centimeters that kind of thing then that's okay see like this one it has one inch and it has the centimeters i'm okay with that because sometimes you need that little bit, um, you know, like when you're gauging, you're cutting. I don't mind that. See here on the bottom, it has just the inches. So it has inches on the top and the bottom and then centimeters only on the top. I'm okay with that. The inches is there for when I need it. But this one doesn't. So I, I was going to cut it this way, but... I don't rely on my own measurements that I wrote. And so because I can't, um, you know, normally, even if it was inches, that would be fine. You could do a six inch on here because you see the numbers. But yeah, I am, um, yeah, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use this one. This is my um, scoreboard and it's my um, cutting. So this is a six inch piece of paper. I'm not going to take the side off because I don't need it. So since I'm doing these in one inch, this would also have to be one inch. So I'll go to the five or I could do it this way too, where it's more accurate. And then you cut one inch strips. Oh, I don't even know if I'm in camera. Here we go. So choose the, the, the size of strips you want. Do you want the inch and a half like that one and this one? Or did you want one inch? You could even go with two inch if you want. Um, 
you know, honestly, you could do two inch and just do two squares by two squares. Like, it's totally up to you. Just play around with it and see what you're, you like. All right. Since I'm going to do this at a three, three inch. So we're going to go like that. And then we're going to take one of these. And you go under and over. So for now, that's all you have to do is under and over. Next one, this one goes under and then over. Don't worry about perfection at this point because it really does not matter. Now, if you want it to, you could even leave the gaps because if you're going to back it with coffee dyed paper, it'll just come through in those intersections. I haven't done one like that yet, but you definitely can. So we'll go uh, always under because you're weaving, right? Okay, so now if you want it snug like these, we're going to move these down to the edge. Okay, and then you're going to square the corner one off, square it, and then push this down. Now there's going to be a lot of fidgety and a lot of adjustments. I guess if you really want it to, you could glue the corner, I guess, if you really want it to. Or if you're one who doesn't have patience, what you could always do is um just have it longer you know what i mean like have it longer it doesn't matter you just do it all all of them longer this one is the length you want and then just with your cutter or scissors you just cut off the extra that is less fitted fiddly um but i'm okay with it teaches me patience so then we just keep moving these up. See, now I've got room for that last one. Hmm. And take it to the edge of your table to get a grip on lifting it. There, and align it. All right, so now we're going to push it in taut again. Got to bring this down. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of fiddly work. So again, you're going to push these together. You're going to push these together. Now, if I wanted to put the other ones, I could. That's another thing you can always do is do the whole thing and then just cut it to your three by three if that's what you want. Why are these? Oh, 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 oh. There we go. And then do the other one. See, that's what I mean. It is very fiddly. So you do your best. Maybe just do the five by five. And because there's so many, I might be able to lift it and do it this way. There we go. 
because they're skinnier strips. You know what I mean? Now, if you're scrapbooking, like I said, this might be fine. But if you're doing um, standard size, like, like printer paper, then this is going to be too big. So there you go. Um, I need to pull this a little bit more down. Pull this a little bit more down. And this one. And then this needs to go all the way to, to the edge. Otherwise, you have to cut off too much. And then you just push this down. And then we're going to go with this one and this one. And then we go with these two. Turn it. And then again, do this one. Oh, no. Wait a minute. No, you start down here. So mine is crooked because if you see here, there's a notch out, but here it, it aligned, which means my papers are crooked. So somehow I've got to now push this down. Okay, so we're going to take this one, move it down. So I'm pushing this a bit. Then I'm pushing this one down. And then pushing this one down. There, so it's more balanced. So it's just really, really fiddly. And you just keep there. See, now it's pretty much intact. So now I will glue the four corners. Then I'll go in and do these and then these. So now if you're doing paper, you can use a glue stick. Um, but because this is art glitter glue, I just use this to fill that up. Because this one, I don't like the nozzle and the pin. It's very, I have trouble getting the pin in. So I prefer this where it just has a rubber stopper. You know what I mean? I prefer this. So I just pour this into there. So now, because I'm using cardstock, I am going to do it this way. And I just put a blob there, hold it down for a second. Do a blob here. Whoop. But make sure when you when you're lifting it to put that blob that it is aligned. See this one was not aligned. Oh well. I guess I'll have to shift these down, that's all. But now that I've glued that one corner, hopefully, ah, uh, like I said, it's very fiddly. There. That's in now. Okay, so now we're going to make sure, because we've done these two corners, so now we're going to make sure this is all nice and snug. And then we're going to do these two corners. Whoop. Come on. Now it did shift again, so before I put this down... And this is just going to hold everything in place. Then you can go back and do your other flaps. Okay. 
but don't do your glue on the edge because we have to trim the edge right and because you're trimming the edge honestly if you have a little gap somewhere it doesn't matter because you're just gonna trim the edge anyways um, you have no choice because of the fact that it is um, it's weaved it will ever so slightly take away from the length Okay, I think I'm done. So now I'm going to flip it. And now these flaps need to be glued. So we're going to glue this one. Remember, not too close to the edge because we're going to trim it. See, like, look how much this one's off. Like, this one is more off than that one. As long as you have it pretty good. I don't think it really matters. Plus, this is on the back side, so it doesn't matter. Now, honestly, I think this is probably good enough to do it with paper because it is going to end up being double with cardstock, which is what I'm using. It's going to be really thick. Now, I'm not going to be decorating this today because I just like to make different types of tucks, pockets, ephemera, like make a bunch of them. And then, um, so then that's done. Um, we might as well glue this one at the same time. Um, yeah, I like to make a bunch of just fun ephemera and... Um, embellishments um, a whole bunch of them and then when I have the journal in front of me and I know where it's gonna go that's when I will decorate it because then I know what the theme of the journal is okay this one actually looks better than that one maybe because this was a one inch square it is more difficult and this is a one and a half inch. This one was actually not as difficult as this one was. So it could be, you know, like if you, um, the bigger the, the cuts, like if you want it, you could do two inch by two inch and just do a four. Actually, I might try doing one of those and see how it turns out. So we're just gluing down the stuff on the, the flaps on this side around the edge. Then we'll flip it and glue the other side. Oh, I thought I turned my fan off. Oh, I don't know where the remote is now. Usually here on my desk. Oh, this one's already... Oh, is it? Oh, no, it's not glued down. Whoop, that one moved. Um, there we go. Now, this one got glued down, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Okay, so now we're on this one. Yeah, it's starting to get warm outside. Give me one second. Oh, there's the remote. It's supposed to be on the shelf under my desk. 
just way too hot that heat's coming in making me grumpy all right so now we're gonna glue this side oh this one's glued well, why is it glued? Did I miss something I was supposed to do on this side? No, this one. Yeah, and it won't be a perfect gluing. Like this is, is lifting here. And that's okay. We'll go back and do that once we cut it. Right now, we just want to hold all the pieces together. Because, trust me, when if they come apart, it's a nuisance. Okay, that one's done. And I find that working at the edge of the table, like of your desk, um, helps when you have to lift if you're on the edge. I'm just in the middle of my mat so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I think that's all of them. So that one's now done and of course that is my sample piece all right so remember a, a piece of printer paper I'm just grabbing a piece of printer paper so this is here in Canada I know in Europe their sizes are a little different but ours is 11 inches by eight and a half. Now, when you make a journal and you fold this in half, it then becomes, you still have the eight and a half, but this becomes five and a half, right? This is five and a half. So something like this, which would be four and a half by four and a half. One, two, three, four, yeah. Four and a half by four and a half that could work but something like this would not or this now this one because i did a one inch by one inch i technically could cut that part and then cut again this part and have four three by threes or i could just cut it one way and have a three by six um Now, I did use Busy Material just so that you can see the contrast. You know, like this is the common pattern, but these are all, you know, because that was a piece of paper with tiles on it. Um, this is a solid color paper, which probably shows it better. Um, but because I used solid color and I used cardstock, the back is colored. So if I'm going to use it like a pocket or something then you know or a tuck it, it's it's ready to go um if you do it with with one-sided paper then you have to decide am i going to like how much am i going to cut it down technically you could cut a two inch strip off of it it should still fit because it becomes four inches then if you cut it right here and then this is a strip that you then can back it and make it into like a um not a belly band because it's not tall enough um like an ephemera card like a bookmarker kind of thing an ephemera card and then you can just decorate it and then the back would be like a writing spot if you put like cop uh, coffee dyed paper because technically a four inch would work and then you could even make it into a pocket and then you know what i mean and then in here you could tuck little things like just your creativity with with uh journaling and with scrapbooking and like anything that you're making into a book depending on its purpose you know you maybe want a book that has all these pockets in it you may want it for uh, writing. So if you cut it in half to make it a three by six, and then you attach it on the top and decorate the top, you could end up having a flip. 
So there's so many possibilities. But today I just wanted to show you what I had made and that it is another idea for ephemera. So let's get the cutting board. Um, with this one, I could probably get away with this if it fits. I don't know. It's a six by six that grew a little bit. Yeah, it works. Okay, so we're going to do first the edges. Just ever so slight. Now, you can't lean unless you find an edge that is pretty much perfect. See, this one sticks out a bit. This one is perfect. Okay, so. Because the whole thing went over, right? So I'll use that as my, to lean onto the edge there. And then we just want ever so slightly to take a little bit off. Yeah, that's a, like I said, I did use cardstock. So that's going to be hard on my cutter. Just ever so slightly. Actually, that needs a little, a little bit more. And I find that if you go quick, like that, like really quick, it cuts better and it doesn't rip the paper. All right, so there we go. So now, if we choose, now this is something else you have to consider. If we choose... To cut it, we got to make sure the blade is aligned with where it separates, like where the two meet. Do your best to put it as close to the blade as possible. See here, it, it, it touches there. But when I have this straight, it does not, like here it's perfect. And here it's a little bit over. So you may have to trim it again. But we're going to go like this. And then we're going to make this one. As, as like take off the extra trim. Because it's not perfect. Not a little bit more. Oh no I can get away with that. Now when you do that. You've made now two pieces. So technically, the side that was glued has been cut. So you now have to glue that side that you cut. So that's this side. Okay. So now we have to go back in. Where's my glue? And now glue this part. Whatever is not glued down, you now have to go back and glue that because you've cut it down. And you know what? With the other one, I have another idea. I just want to finish gluing this. I did do both sides, didn't I? I'm not even paying attention because I'm thinking what else I can do with it. How many how, how many directions can you take this this weave idea? Did I do the back side? Yeah, I did. And the front side's done, yeah. Okay, those two are done. Now this one, I'm going to cut it also because I do the journals that the papers are cut in half, like my journals are this size or smaller. I have not started to do scrapbook paper, so it would be like 6 inch by 12 inch. 
folded scrapbook paper. I have not done those yet. I'm just toying around with these and I am trying to do some smaller ones just to get the practice, right? Because I've only done, like I haven't done that much of it. So, yeah. Now this one, oh no, I said I could get away with the other one. There we go. All right, so again, we're going to cut the trim. We're going to trim the edges. Oh, we got to find a straight side. The straightest that you can find. Actually, I think it is that side. Because other than here, yeah. Like, this is the one that sticks out. But these are three are all the same. Because that one piece that I, this one, this piece, that I went behind this, that is straight. So... We can use that. We could even shift it a bit if we want it to. But then that one will be wider than this one and you don't want that. I don't know though. I guess we could look at the space here. Like when you push this all the way over, Look at the gap there and look at the gap here. I guess we could gauge it that way. All right. So once you got your first trim, the rest is, is easier because then you just push it up against there. Nope, a little more. There. Nope, a little bit more. There we go. See, that's why I like the guillotine uh, style cutter because you can do just a little sliver. Like you see these little slivers? Well, when you use the other one that slides the cu cutter, this, it'll cause the paper to bunch up. This paper will start bunching up. It can't do these tiny little slivers where a guillotine can. And that's why I really like this, these guillotine, guillotines. All right. No, that one still needs more. It looks crooked. Okay, I'm going to have to do it again. Because it looks crooked to me. So I'm going to line this side up, but have this end sticking out a bit. Because I don't know, it looks crooked to me. All right, so now using that as my gauge, we're going to go back and do it again. Yeah, that should be yeah it looks more square now but mind you some of these in the middle this looks bigger than that one can you see this one if you look at the width it looks bigger than this one which means these two should have been pushed in more but that's okay because it looks like a puzzle. It's supposed to look like a puzzle. At least that's my opinion. And you know what? We're, we're, we're just having fun. So it really doesn't matter. Okay, now with this one, I want to have some fun. And now that we've got all the edges straight and everything looks good, we can now push it against the edge here and know that we're doing it straight. All right, so... Now, what I want to do is do the two by the two by two. So we're going to cut down the middle. Okay, I think this should work. Now, I, I haven't done this before, so you and I are learning together. All right. Got 
don't know why that ended up there. Oh, it must have been a sliver from the back side. Oh, see? Because it's not straight, you've got this. But that's okay. But I think before I do a second cut, I'm going to glue these down. Remember the ones that are now exposed that weren't glued? Because we glued around the edges, right? So now these need to be glued. Okay, which, oh, that side. Okay, and then once these side, this side is glued, well, I better close it because art glitter glue dries up pretty quick. You don't want to leave it open. All right, so now we're going to take these two and do another cut. This way. Now, if I, if you want it to, you could even cut it like a two by three, right? But I'm going to do it two by two just to see what it looks like. Now remember, because we're weaving the paper, because of this little gap, you will it will look like it's not straight. But that's okay. That can't be helped. See what I mean? This one shows the trim. If you look at this one... See, it goes a little bit further than like that tile and then there's a border and then there's a piece of the next tile on both sides. But that's normal because of the paper I chose, right? So there's two of them. And I think I'm going to do one more like that. Um, which is the outer edge? Do I know? Oh, this is most likely the outer edge. All right, so we're going to cut it again. One thing I hate about this little guillotine, oh, another thing, other than the centimeters, if you go put the lever, this lever goes up too high, it kind of pops behind the blade, and then you have to pull it out in order to get it up against the blade again. I don't like that. See here, I'll show you now. If I put this too high, watch this end. Did you see it move? I'll do it again. See? I hate that because I have a habit of putting it up and then I'll position my paper and I'll go to cut and I can't go because the blade sticks out. I have to, it, this has a spring. Now I don't know if all the little guillotines are like that, but yeah. That's another thing I don't like about that one. So anyways, there you go. That's what we did today. And then we did this one. And that's where I got the idea from. That I did about a year ago. Honestly, I can't remember if I got it from a video or if it was just my creative thought. See there? You can see there's a little hole there. And that's fine. Whatever. And this is not even straight. I'm, I'm, but if I, if I try and straighten it out, because this is more narrow, this will be more narrow, and then it'll look lopsided. So I'm just gonna leave it be. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Different ways of making ephemera. You can back them with colored paper, or coffee dyed paper, whatever you want. Leave it as is. This one can even be a, a pocket. Um, this one could be an ephemera card, and then you just decorate it. Um, hope you enjoyed this little quick video. 
Um, I don't know how long it took. Oh, 45 minutes. Okay. That wasn't that quick. But anyways, remember, do what makes you happy and everything else will fall into place. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.